at the level crossing, the gates were frozen. So Duncan's passengers decided to hum a jolly Christmas song to pass the time. But Duncan didn't like it at all. He was about to give them a blast from his whistle when Rusty came along. What a lovely song, Duncan! Isn't it? And then poor Duncan got stuck behind Luke, who was struggling up a slippery slope. For, but for sake, Luke, what's the hold-up? Rusty saw that Duncan had forgotten to be cheerful. Sorry, Duncan. I can't go on because my wheels keep slipping on the icy track. Can't you just grit it up with a little sand? I'm afraid my sandbox is empty. Duncan realised that by getting grumpy, he had hurt Luke's feelings. So he buffered up to Luke and dropped some sand on the rail. He gave him a little push to help him on his way again. Woo! Thanks, Duncan! And Rusty saw all of this too. Duncan was a little sad that he'd lost his temper. He knew what that meant. No coat of paint for him. But the following day, Duncan made his way to the steamworks anyway. He had decided to apologise to Mr Percy. Good morning, sir. I know I failed your challenge and I wasn't cheerful all day, but... Say no more, Duncan. You did a good thing yesterday, helping out poor Luke when he was in a spot of bother. Oh, well, I suppose maybe I did. And for that, you deserve a special treat. You mean a new coat of paint? That's right, Duncan. Thank you, sir. That's very kind. From now on, I will try and be more cheerful, sir. At least some of the time. Very good, Duncan. But I think I might have been wrong to ask you to be cheerful all day. You do grumble a lot, but that's just the way you are. And it doesn't make you any less useful. Merry Christmas to you, Duncan. Merry Christmas to one and all. Bah humbug. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan was trying to make up for lost time when he came across the workmen once again. I can't be late. I can't hear any more complaints. I can't seem to do anything right today. At the end of the journey, Mr Percival was waiting for Duncan. Sir, I know what you're going to say, and I'm truly sorry. Thank you for saying so, Duncan. But why did you take Scarloe's coaches and speed through the railworks and ignore the guard's whistle? Because of that grumpy passenger, sir. I was trying to stop him complaining. Duncan, I know that passenger well. He's always grumpy, and he always finds something to complain about. But today, you made everybody grumpy. Yes, sir. I, I know, sir. From now on, you must do your best to ignore that man and get on with doing your job properly. Will do. Thank you, sir. That evening, when Duncan passed the men working on the line, he decided to slow right down. Tea. Evening, Duncan. It's surprising to see you smiling at the end of a busy day. But I've had a good day, Reneas. Today, I learnt a very important lesson. I'm going to change my ways and be a different engine from now on. Just you wait and see. Really? You mean 
You going to stop grumbling once and for all? No. I mean I'm going to stop listening to that grumpy old passenger and just get on with being really useful. Good for you, Duncan. Good for you. All right. All right. I'm going. Stop grumbling, indeed. Stop me, who's always grumbling. Ouch! Ah, there goes my wobbly wheel again. Ah, I knew this would happen. Why do people always think it's me who's always grumbling? I mean, I've never grumbled in my life. Me, grumbling, don't think so. This is your fault, Ben. You were supposed to bring the coal. You shouldn't have been messing about all day. Me messing about? I'm not the one who's been messing about. Bill and Ben didn't even have enough steam to be able to get away from each other. Oh, great! Typical! Now I'm stuck here with you. Now I'm stuck here with you. Come on, you two. Chop, chop. Marion needs you to collect some clay. We can't, Timothy. We've run out of coal. What? But there's no steam without coal. What am I supposed to do now? Don't look at me. Oh, go on, Timothy. Go and fetch some coal for us, please. Well, I guess I could. After all, I've still got plenty of oil in my fuel tank. So it was Timothy who delivered the clay to Brendam Docks. And found cars loaded with coal ready and waiting for him. About time. Me first? No, me. Since neither of you are going anywhere yet, you won't mind if I go first. Oh, what? Not fair. Bill, Ben, is there anything you want to say to Timothy? Thanks, Timothy. And? Sorry. Sorry we were silly. And? And sorry we made fun of you. Yes, and while we're two of a kind, being like you, the only oil-burning engine on the whole of Sodor, is kind of special and really useful. When, when we've, we've run, run out, out of coal. coal. <laughs> Oliver! What are you doing on my track? Your track? Who says this is your track? There are two ways of doing things, Oliver. The Great Western way and... The wrong way. I know. And you're doing it the wrong way. All the engines were making silly mistakes. But Thomas's mistakes were the silliest of all. At the end of the day, Sir Topham Hatt was very disappointed with his engines. Everyone makes mistakes, but when you are showing off and in a hurry, you make far more mistakes than usual, and you have all been showing off. I don't think any of these engines deserve to take you home to the mainland, sir. Perhaps I can lend you my car. Oh, the indignity. Perhaps you'd let me take the deputy minister home, after all. You, Spencer. 
I can learn from my mistakes, sir. I just need to be given one more chance. Spencer is right. Everyone deserves a second chance. I will forget what happened today. And maybe tomorrow, I can come back and see how the railway really runs on Sodor. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So the next day, the deputy minister did come back and all of Sir Topham Hatt's engines showed him just how well their railway could be run. Excellent, Sir Topham Hatt. You run a very fine railway, indeed. I told you they were really useful engines. Hooray! <laughs>